Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today we're gonna to be unboxing and reviewing this electric car polisher. I did receive this item to review, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this item or finding out more about it, the link to it will be in my video description below. Please go ahead, check it out and do your shopping from there. You can see it comes in a very ordinary box with just one sticker letting us know what it is. This features a 1400 watt motor, six speed settings ranging from 600 to 3000 RPMs, a detachable handle, and it features multiple sponge pads for us. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the package contents. Here are some of the package contents. You can see we got five identical sponges right there and then two identical sponges right here. Take note that they were compressed in shipment, so give them some time to expand back out and regain their natural shape. You can see we got two different adapters right here as well, 180 millimeters, and then we have 150 with the hook and loop for us to connect to these items. Then you can see we have our removable handle right here, very lightweight, and we have our travel case. Now let's go ahead, let's open up the travel case and see those package contents. Here are the rest of the package contents. First up, we have a bag with an Allen wrench, two carbon brushes, and two bolts for us to attach this D handle to the unit. We have multiple sponges in different sizes and colors, three orange ones right there. We even have imitation wool attachments we can use, three different sizes. We pick up another 180 millimeter adapter and a 125 millimeter adapter. And then last but not least, we have the electric polisher itself that we'll look at in a little bit more detail right now as we set it up. Here's the polisher. You can see we got a red and black body right here. This is where you replace the carbon brush. Go ahead, you can just twist this off and put the new one in. We have a nice trigger as well. You can get two fingers on it and we can lock it into place. We can look at it from the top. You can see our speed adjustment right here. We can go from one all the way up to six. And we have a graph showing us the correlations between the speed setting and the RPMs right there. We can look at it from the other side. It's identical. We have your carbon brush replacement right there. And then here it is from underneath. So we can see everything from there as well too. 1400 watts and some more specs for us. We can look at it up close right there. So you can see it from all angles. So really heavy duty, a solid build. Now let's go ahead, let's get the handle installed. To install the handle, go ahead, slide it over and make sure it lines up with the two holes that you see here. There's one on each side for the handle. So then just slide it into place like that. You're gonna drop the two included bolts right in there, one on each side and tighten them down with the included Allen wrench. Now the D handle has been installed successfully as you can see right here. Now if you did want to add the additional handle as well, just remove this bolt and twist this handle into place. Now you can see we have that handle attached as well. So we're ready to go ahead. Let's attach our first sponge. Getting the different attachments installed is pretty straightforward. Go ahead. You're just going to thread this right on to the polisher right here. Then you can see once it's tight enough, it's going to start moving the motor. So on the other side, we have a motor lock button right here. Hold that down and continue to press it until it locks into place. Now we can tighten it more and the motor's not gonna move when we hold that button down. So we're free to go ahead, place a sponge on there just like you see right here. And now everything's ready to go and we can use this to polish something. When we're done, we can just remove the sponge. And then if you want to remove this, same thing. You can see the motor spinning right now. But if we push that motor lock button, we can then lock the motor in place so we can loosen this up without spinning everything around and around. Now let's go ahead, let's try it out. We're gonna be polishing this car hood right here and there's a major scratch along the hood right there and then one running diagonal as well. We have a really bright light that you can shine on the hood so you can see all the hairline scratches and some of the more major scratches as well that we're gonna work on removing in this video. So we washed the hood of the car and we used tape to mark a line to separate the unpolished side versus the polished side. Now you can see we attached one of the foam pads and we put some compound on it as well. So we're ready to start polishing. First thing you wanna do is you wanna go ahead, you wanna select a small area on the hood to work in and to work with. 
and blot it on before you turn on the polisher so you don't spread it around everywhere in the air. You wanna make sure that your compound just stays on the car. And then once you have it spread in like so, you can go ahead, you can power this on and start polishing. Just be sure to move it around. Don't stay in one area too long and let the polisher do the work. Start at a slower speed and then work your way up to a speed that you're comfortable at and that you're seeing results. You're gonna want to let the polish turn clear or once it's dry, then you can stop polishing. So look for clear polish or look for signs that it's starting to dry. Then you can reapply, do a different area, or wipe it down and see the results. So we have the right side of the hood polished and the left side is unpolished. We went ahead, we peeled back the tape so we can look in more detail now with our light. Look at all the scratches on the unpolished surface we can see as we shine this light over the hood. Even all the way up until the tape and the tape marks because that area wasn't polished since the tape was on the hood. We can see we have a lot of hairline scratches in the paint. We can move the light over to the other side right here and we can see how drastically improved the paint quality is. So we still have some of your occasional bigger scratches, but even those look better. And you can see we hardly have any of the hairline scratches that are present on the other side or even right here where the tape was. Now we're gonna use the polisher on this piece of marble tile. We actually have it upside down. So this is the unfinished side of the marble tile and we're gonna go ahead and clean that up. So we just cleaned up the back side, now let's flip it over and do the other side. We just did the other side of the tile and everything looks great. Now we can go on to discuss the speed settings again. So while we're here, let's go ahead, let's operate this from all the different speed settings. So right now we have it on speed setting one, now we turn it up to speed setting two, speed setting three, speed setting four, speed setting five, and speed setting six. So you can see we can control the speed with ease and we can lock the trigger in place with this nice button and adjust the speed accordingly without having to repress the trigger down. So after using the electric pressure washer for a while, I gotta say, very easy to use and operate. That trigger's really nice. I like how big it is and the fact that we can lock it into place so we can free up that hand if we wanna hold the polisher somewhere else. And we can still adjust the speed while it's locked in place, which is great. So I really like that speed adjustment wheel. Very simple and easy to use. They also give you so many pads, it's gonna last you a long time. On that note, if after a couple of days they don't regain their form, the quickest way to do that is just submerge them in water, get all the pads wet, and let them dry off. Within a couple hours at the most, they'll get their shape back. I also want to point out, after using this, I had some trouble with the handle. Since my unit did not come with an instruction guide, I was under the impression I could attach this handle to this handle as well, so we could use both options at the same time. It appears that this is not long enough in the end to be stable in there. So it may come off for you if you try to do that as well. You might be able to cut some of this back so then you can stick the thread in there so you can use both attachments at the same time. But it's obvious after using it for a little while, you can either use this handle in there and take this out 
or just use this handle. But I'd love to see that in the future with a little bit more thread so we can use it as it appears to be designed to be able to have both of those handles at the same time if you want. I'd also like to see the Allen wrench be able to be hidden somewhere on the device so we don't have to worry about misplacing it. It'd be nice to be able to have it kept on the tool at all times. So if you do want to swap handles, you can. Same with this, it'd be nice if we could hide this somewhere in the device so we can always have both attachments just to make it a little easier to operate and not have to worry about loose parts lying around your house. But really simple to swap these out. Everything worked just fine, nothing weird to report. I would like to see a longer power cord as well in the future, but again, you're probably gonna be using this with an extension cord anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but it would be nice if it had like a six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10-foot cord straight out of the box for you. If you're interested in this product, the link to it will be in my video description below. Please go ahead, check it out, and do your shopping from there. Hit that like button for us. Subscribe to our channel. We have new content coming out daily. Don't want you to miss anything. Please, please, please give us a follow online, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can message us on WeChat. Check out our website. Join our free newsletter, guys. Follow us on Twitch and join our Discord server as well. Don't forget, new content daily, and we can't wait to see you in our next video.